I'm Martin John for ExpressRadio.co.uk, and I am joined by former professional wrestler, uh, New York Times bestseller, huge rock star, TV presenter. The list, the list just goes on. I don't even know how to start this. Uh, Chris Jericho, it's lovely to have you in the studio, man. Bake sale at the ladies' auxiliary, sweeping the street outside of your house. I do everything. Oh, it's, it's good to know, man. I, yeah, I, 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 I always need that. Odd jobs. You know, if you want me to do anything like that, odd jobs, painting. I hear you make a mean sandwich as well. I do, I do, but only with turkey. I'm not very good with roast beef or, or ham. Oh, you just, you just, you just avocado. Me. You guys like avocado? Of course, here. I like I'm avocado. Not much, I'm not a very well uh, versed in the uh, in the art of avocado spreading. I think I prefer the way you say avocado to the way I actually. How do actually you say it? Taste. Avocado, avocado. How do I, I say it? avocado? I I See, I'm Canadian, so I have a Canadian accent which is similar to the English accent. Like when we say, "What's the band that Kurt Cobain is in?" Nirvana. Right, Nirvana is what we say. In the States, it's, or we say Nirvana in Canada, oh, right. in Canada Nirvana. Well, that's good. I mean, I and have a... Drama I have... and pasta. <laughs> but in the States, if you say Nirvana, it's like, it's Nirvana. I'm like, uh, sorry. Well, okay, it's cool, whatever. man. I've got a whole bunch of Wayne Gretzky questions I can just, like, buzz you on at any time. Very good. Um, so you guys are currently touring Europe uh, with the Fozzie with the Fozzie Tour, with the new album, with Jet Black, mm-hmm. um, supporting you guys. So how, how's the tour going so far for you guys? It's been great. We've uh, we've only done two shows. We did a uh, Reading and Southampton last night, which were both great shows. And then uh, we we're we're back in Cardiff again. We love uh, we love playing here. It's a great uh, great rock and roll town. So, you know, the tour is like three weeks long. So when it's only day three, it's just so early on. Ask me about a week when we're all grizzled and like, Rah. but right now it's like we're so excited. Nah. So. <laughs> That's fun. It's gonna be good. Because you guys were here earlier this year doing the Sonosphere Festival, weren't you? Yeah, we did Sonosphere uh, in July. Because um, I saw that you were you on the Jagermeister stage and absolutely mm-hmm. packed it out, and you were uh, about the same time as Bill Bailey. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, I don't know whether you know it. We we have a, a, a you obviously don't, but we have a student magazine here called Quench that rated you guys like the best band of uh, in the top five bands of the entire festival experience. So uh, that's great. Yeah, that's cool. Like I, I, you know, sometimes when I venture out and read reviews. Um, you know, it, when you see things like that, I mean, another one I read said that Metallica, Weezer, and, and Fozzie were the three best bands of the weekend. Yep. I mean, that's pretty cool to uh, to know that we made that um, that type of of, of impact. Because I know we were up against Bill Bailey, and I was like, well, who the hell is Bill Bailey? I didn't even know. And then I looked into it, and I was like, oh, God. But uh, we still got a great a great crowd, and um, that's the cool thing about when you do a festival like that. It's so big, and there's so many people that there's plenty of, of crowd to go around for, for, you know, for the acts that people want to see. Especially, I mean, do, do you think obviously the big push with that is that when you you you're a rock band, first and foremost, with an awesome ringtone. Bill Bailey calling me right now. What's um, that? That you're a rock band first and foremost, so obviously that. So you also got this amazing reputation as a great live band, and I've seen you guys, so I can testament to that. So, um, so w- what's the process like when you go out on stage? What, how do how do you sort of just? Well, we pride ourselves in, in the fact we have a high energy uh, show, and it's not like contrived. It's just the way we feel when we play, and. and um, we have a great fan base over in the UK, and I think we've toured here maybe ten times so far. This is our fourth tour on the Chase and the Grail record. So, and, and I know a lot of people in the states will, will say, like, "Why do you guys always go back to the UK? Why are you back in the UK?" And it's because we have this is kind of our second home. We've always had a great fan base, and the crowd is so energetic. Um, like last night, they were just chanting; they wouldn't stop chanting every time a song ended. They would just start in with like all these crazy soccer chants and stuff, and, and the vibe is so much fun. It's like we're actually having fun when we're playing. Is that like it's almost an evil word, right? Well, but um, I, I think I think that gives us a lot of uh, the, the vibe and the energy. It just is very high, and we bring that every single show that we have, and it's become part of our uh, of our reputation. It's, it's pretty cool. Because I mean, one of the big things I've noticed, I've seen you guys live a few times now, and the the first time I saw you, there was just there was there was a big energy with the you know Y two J chants and, and wrestling chants. But now I found like especially at the Sonosphere gig, you had these sort of Y two J chants from minority, and then this massive roar of fozzy chants and things so are you starting to because the, the band is doing incredible and are you starting to sort of feel that you're getting the recognition on both stages well, now yeah i mean when we first started it was a big you know here's the guys from stuck mojo and jericho from wrestling so let's check it out and i guess that could be a gimmick that maybe helped us in some ways and hindered us in a lot of ways but especially since the last record came out all that remains in, in 2005 uh, and especially when Grail came out, it's a whole different thing. We've, we've never been a wrestling band. We never promoted ourselves as a wrestling band. Yep. You know, it's not like we're on stage singing about body slams and and you know wearing spandex. And I think at this point, people don't really care who's in the band. I mean, yep. they know that Jericho is Jericho, and that's fine. There's always going to be fans of me from every aspect of things I've done. And that's great. But people come to the shows now to see Fozzie, and that's that's a testament. I mean, we've been doing this for 13 years. You know, and I think if it was just some kind of a novelty thing, it would have been gone a long yep. time ago. 
You know, and I didn't just wake up one day and go, wow, I want to be a singer in a band. Like, I've been playing in bands since I was 12 years old. Yeah. I've been a musician a lot longer than, than I ever was wrestling. So to, to see us get to this point and to see the fans really get into what we do as, as, as a rock and roll band, it's, it's pretty cool. Awesome, man. I just want to touch really briefly on uh, things you do outside of music, not necessarily with the, with the WWE, but I mean a lot of the uh, television work you've been mm-hmm. doing. Cause, I mean, obviously, since, since the last time we spoke, uh, the book came out over here, Undisputed, uh, right. another New York Times uh, on the bestsellers list. Sunday Times bestseller, too. Sunday Times. Woo. Yeah. And uh, I lo- <laughs> thank you. And, uh, um, and Dance with the Stars as well, mm-hmm. uh, which must have been a b- ah, What was the experience of doing that? Well, I got asked to do Dance with the Stars two separate times before I actually did it, which was the third yep. time they asked me. And uh, I'd never danced before ever. Like, who has, right? You know, ballroom dancing, like, whatever. But I, I thought I'd give it a try. And, and just uh, from, like, the level of the show, I mean, 25 million people watch it every week and like when I was doing the WWE like Raw would have like maybe 5 million people so it's like 5 times the amount yep. of people watching so it's a whole new fan base and once I started getting into it I really started to enjoy it because being a wrestler you have to be light on your feet you have to remember a lot of things being a musician you have to hear the beat and stay on stay on time hear the different counts and the syncopations and all that musicians type talk so it really was like a natural fit for me and, and yep. once I started feeling it and getting into it I really really dug it I was actually kind of sad when I got eliminated it's like I had dancing withdrawals like what am I going to do with myself because you try you, you, you train like eight hours a day every day for like ten weeks or whatever it was so yeah. it, was, it, was, it was hard man it was a lot of a lot of work that you had to do, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. Because, I mean, uh, obviously, at the States, you keep the George Clooney thing. I, I was just surprised you didn't end up with, you know, like, Grace Jones or something after that. Like, that's what I was kind of hoping for. That, Grace but. Jones? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, as a girlfriend? Yeah, you know, I was kind of hoping for a person. Oh, I, I would, like, you know, I would meet a celebrity Grace Jones. I could do better than that. Jeez, you, you could date Grace Jones, but not, not me. Thanks. I'll take, I don't know if that's a compliment, but I'll take it. Um, awesome. So, I mean, so obviously that was a much different experience from Celebrity Duets. Are you getting a lot, a lot of recognition now? Do people on the streets go, yo, you're from Dancing with the Stars? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's more like, you know, my fan base of 50 to 60-year-old ladies has quadrupled. You know, but it was great. I mean, I got to do shows like The Tonight Show, uh, and yeah. Ellen, and the shows that would never touch you from wrestling. They, yeah. they don't care about the WWE uh, but you do Dance with the Stars for a couple of weeks, and suddenly everyone knows who you are, and, and, and so it really did up the you know recognition ante and up my you know presence in in that world. So there's still a lot of stuff going on out in Hollywood, and a lot of things that you know yep. projects that I'm pitching and that you're getting pitched on and stuff. So I think I'm going to start doing something else out there over the next couple of months. So. I mean, because uh, because the WWE just launched its new TV network, haven't they? Mm-hmm. That's the big thing. I mean, would you consider doing something in regards to presenting on that? Because I know you're doing a lot of TV work as well. Yeah, I don't know. I have to wait and see how it how it works out you know it's like the WWE movies they asked me to do a couple of those and I just didn't really think they were what I was looking for and it was uh which ones were they um Marine 2 was oh. one of them and the other one was the one that Kennedy was in uh, uh was that behind enemy, enemy lines, lines like Columbia? 17 yeah. or something like that <laughs> so yeah it wasn't really what I was into so uh I don't know I, I you know I wouldn't say no but um I guess I would just have to wait and see what, what the what the show was they wanted me to do um, and just because we, we got inundated with questions, so I've taken up a lot of your time already, so I'll just try and get to some it. of the yeah, ones sure, that are sure. uh, that have been asked the most. Um, we, obviously, The Rock, mu- big, big movie star, has sort of come back a bit in the WWE. Do you get that? Because I, I, in your book, you, you talk about how, how much you like working with The Rock, and in fact, there's mm-hmm. lot, lots of time that. Yeah, Is yeah, that a temptation great. to come back to... Well, I mean, I, I never, like, left on, like, a, I'm leaving. Like, it's my contract expired in September of 2010, and that's when this tour yep. just started going, and it just kept going and going and going. Uh, I mean, we've been to, I think, 13 different countries on this tour. You know, you, Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, Germany, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, Australia, Canada, America. So there's like this huge list of, of, of touring that we've done. And then Dancing with the Stars came up, and then the book came out. So I've just been really busy uh, doing all these different things. So... I don't know if I, I, I might go back. I might not. I, I never really said, like, this is it. I'm yep. done. It's just that I've, I've always considered myself and have been more than just wrestling guy. Yep. And it's part of what I do, and I enjoy it. But to me, it's all show business. So it's wrestling, it's music, it's acting, it's writing, it's doing a radio show, whatever it may be. It's all entertainment, right? Yeah. So that's what I like to do. And I think a lot of wrestling fans get mad when I say that I don't know if I'm going to go back or when I'm going to go back. And it makes them mad, but it's like, sorry. You know? yeah. If I never wrestled again, it wouldn't bother me because I've done everything, you know. Um, but if something came came across my you know my mind that was really interesting and I thought could be very 
uh, interesting and different. Yep. I wouldn't want to do what's going on right now because it's all it's pretty much the same. So I want to think of something that's different. And if I can do that and something, like I said, something pops in my head, then I would consider it. Because, I mean, you're, 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 you just, you just touched on that, that you're always doing something. I mean, you're constantly either on the road or working on projects. And I, I imagine because you've, you've, you've had such a great career doing that and it's still only early stages of your career anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, what does Chris Jericho do on, on, on a day off? Like, do, do you get sort of days off when you're just at well, home? When, and- when I'm off, I just, uh, when I'm not working, I'm at home uh, with my family. And I don't really have too many friends in Tampa where I live. It's just all family stuff. I have three young kids. So I just hang out with them all the time, you know, take them to school and make lunches and do all that sort of stuff. And that's kind of a good balance to have. So because I'm on the road and I'm working so much that when I'm off, I just stay at home and do nothing but hang out with the kids. So that's pretty much what I do on a day off. If we're, on, if we're off on the road here, I mean, I don't like having days off on the road. Like right now we're in the middle of 13 shows in a row because as a, as a, as a singer, it gets kind of hard. You know, it's hard on your throat. It's hard on your voice. But Last tour in July, the Sonosphere tour, we had like I think five days off out of twenty. It's just too much. You, yeah. What do you do? Okay, let's walk to McDonald's. Let's walk to the gym, or let's just walk around the town. It's like like it's boring after about an hour. You know what I mean? So it's like we want to be here and we want to work. And then if I'm going to have a day off, I want to have it off at home. And that's understandable. I mean, because uh, the Sonosphere as well, you you work with so many great artists, and I believe you're traveling on the Anthrax bus for a little while. And well, we uh, toured with Anthrax. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I rode with them. Uh, a couple of nights and friends with those guys so yeah we toured with them which was great and did a bunch of shows with El Nino did our own shows did the festival gigs in England Germany Belgium Netherlands like I said so it was a good tour so how's how's that in in the sense of that you, you got bands that maybe when you were first starting or you were using as, as influence when you first started now you've got an entire range of bands who are looking at Fozzie as one of those bands that are yeah it's really cool I mean um, actually one of your hometown bands bullet for my valentine we played some shows with them in the states uproar festival Avenge sevenfold was headlining and bullet was was i think co-headlining and um matt tuck the the singer the guitar player is like he loves our guitar player rich ward and rich they'd never met so when matt met rich it was like oh he was like so like excited and you know rich influenced his playing and here's bullet one of the biggest bands in the uk and and you know huge everywhere else and they're big Fozzie fans, big Rich Ward fans. So it's it's cool to know that. You know what I mean? It's cool to see that. Awesome. So just to wrap things up, is there anything you want to say to, to all the people who are going to be listening out now, whether they're, they're Fozzie fans or Jericoholics or your, your future projects? What do you have in the pipeline? Well, like I said, man, we're just going to do this tour. And then once it's done, we start working on a new record. And then... Um, you know, hopefully next summer, come back over here again and play. Uh, I don't think you can do Sonosphere two years in a row, but there's plenty of other big festivals, as we all know. So we've been talking to a couple of those guys and just continue to do what I do. And we're excited to be back in Cardiff. Like I said, it's going to be a great show tonight. And it's, we've never played here before, like the student union or whatever it is. So it's, it's really cool to, to be here. And um, yeah, man, I'm just looking forward to seeing everybody and getting ready to go crazy tonight. It's going to be crazy. Hey, this is Chris Jericho. You're listening to Express Radio. Don't change it or I will find you. I know where you live. I have your address right in front of me.